Welcome to the Swimming From Home talk show. I'm here with the TAC Titans. Um, I'll let everyone introduce themselves uh, as they first speak. Um, you know, it's been a pretty wild time. I can't believe it's already been almost two months that we've been kind of quarantined like this. Um, you know, I, I, just to get us started, overall, how would you say generally today uh, you all are doing? I'll pass the the mic to uh, Bruce to, to get us started. Um, actually, we're, we're doing quite well. Um, obviously, it's a little frustrating not being back in the water yet, but, you know, we're doing enough things outside the water to try to keep everybody engaged and um, just trying to stay busy and kind of get ready for our soft, soft opening, hopefully somewhere in mid-May. Uh, John, you want to go next? Yeah, um, just echoing what Bruce has said, um, you know, we've got a dry land program that's going, um, being sent out every day. Hopefully, um, folks are following through with that. Um, we're fortunate to have uh, open water around, and we've got a number of swimmers who have wetsuits and um, uh, are they're getting outside as much as they can as the weather is getting warmer. So um, I think we're, you know, we're doing as good as we can do in, in the circumstances and having as much fun with it as, as possible. Uh, Charlotte? Um, yeah, I, I think definitely in the beginning, it was a big adjustment. Um, just not being able to train the same way that we're all typically used to. But um, I think now being about a month into it, um, I've definitely fallen into kind of like a rhythm. I've been doing um, a lot of open water swimming, um, which has been fun because that's not something I've really done before. So that's kind of cool to um, get to experience that now. And um, yeah, just kind of like um, working with a lot of different styles of training. Like um, I've been doing not really running, I'm not a big runner, but um, things like rowing and um, like biking and also like um, weights and gyrant and stuff like that. So I think that it's been good and it's been actually um, a cool opportunity to like experience new stuff. Uh, Lance? Yeah, like Charlotte was saying before, like it was like a really big adjustment for me once like like Bruce told us, like we had our last practice and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I got like back like in the water pretty quickly. Like started doing open water a lot in the dry land every day. Uh, all right, Claire. Um, at first it was a big adjustment, but now like I have gotten used to it and I've actually kind of enjoyed it because it's actually been like a big mental break for me. Um, going in to the Olympics, I was getting like pretty nervous just cause you know, it's like my first Olympic trials and everything, but like being able to step back and like reflect on that, like, I think it like just sets me up better for this summer. And I've been enjoying like working out with my family. My mom's a big runner, so I've been able to like bond with her some. And then my brother and I get big in our basement with our minimal weights, but it's been really fun. I mean, yeah, that all sounds great. I honestly, I would, I would just love to hear each of you elaborate a little, um, you know, how you have been spending your time. If, if you guys have had any team uh, related activities. You know, I know a lot of teams are doing Zoom calls like this. I know personally, I'm getting so sick of Zoom calls, but that's okay. Um, you know, that's kind of what, what we're relegated to now, which is totally fine. But um, yeah, like if you could just give me a little a, a elaboration on how you guys have been spending the last two months. Again, it's kind of an anomaly to me that it's been that long already. Time has kind of flown by quickly, um, at least for me. And so um, 
you know, let, let's, let's get into some details of what you guys, how you guys have been passing the time. Uh, well, as soon as we kind of find out that we were going to be down for a while, we had a coaches meeting and kind of came up with a plan of what we wanted to do, how we wanted to stay in contact with the swimmers. And that first started with um, creating a dry land platform. And so our, our strength trainer, Coach Aaron, has done an outstanding job and sends out the dry land workout of the day. And then also included with that, we do a live yoga session once a week. Uh, so our Titans can log on and do yoga at home because uh, that's been a big part of our, our program in the past. And then I send out a weekly video message to the, uh, the entire tax swimmers and families. And just with a message for that week and an update and what's going on and perhaps some little bit of motivational pieces. And then attached to that correspondence is a kind of an informational letter to each of the different age groups. Um, and in that information that goes out, we have a motivational piece. We have a stroke mechanics piece with corresponding video. Uh, we have a nutrition tip and how that plays into their swimming success. And then we also have a call to action item for that week. And then, of course, like everybody else, we'll have group Zoom meetings and then we'll also have some Zoom meetings with just two or three swimmers so that it's a little bit more personal and we can get into some stuff a little bit. Um, also, I've been doing a lot of um, recruiting talks with our older swimmers. Those are gonna be juniors like all of these guys here on the, on the Zoom call and um, our current juniors. And uh, just kind of really going through that process narrowing down their lists and so forth. And then um, our staff right now is reading a book called The Energy Bus. And we are uh, reading that together and then discussing that, basically to see how that applies to what we do on the deck every day. So that's kind of what we've been doing as a staff and what some of these guys have been doing. I guess I'll go. Um, in addition to, you know, um, what Bruce went over um, outward facing in terms of the swimmers and the families, um, you know, we have our, our the Triangle Aquatic Center, our, our, our home facility. Um, so we created um, a list of projects that needed to get done um, around the facility, anywhere from, you know, cleaning the kitchen that we use for hospitality at meets to um, changing the gravel and the sand and all the filters for the pools. So Monday morning, we moved 480 bags of filter sand from outside to inside and swapped all that out. So, um, you know, we've been, you know, taking care of things here. Um, keeping people busy, keeping people engaged, and um, taking advantage of the downtime to do some things that um, we would not have otherwise had time to do. So it's um, hadn't been the most fun projects all the time, but everybody's pitched in and um, we've gotten a lot of things done um, that the time has afforded us to do. I guess for me, how I've been spending my time is, um, well, I guess this might be different than other um, like Wake County kids, but um, my school is already online. So um, like for that bit of it, like the adjustment, like I still have school. And I think that kind of helps um, like structure my time a little bit more because, you know, having just like blank space, um, it's kind of difficult to um, like figure out how you're going to fill your time and like manage that. So I think having the school aspect has been um, actually helpful for me. And then, so I've been doing that and um, then also having um, like um, the Titans dryland um, every day has been 
good because that's really nice like to have a specific workout and know what you're supposed to be doing and um so most days usually i'll swim um for around an hour and then i'll do um the dry land and then um the rest of my time besides that is pretty much spent um like watching netflix and um and actually um there's this book i don't usually have a lot of free time so um i don't i guess read as much as i'd like to but um this book by um david goggins is called can't hurt me i read it um a couple months ago but i think that um it's a really good book and it talks about um mental toughness and so um in my free time i've been reading that too so you said you swim for you know usually an hour a day hour a day it, i'm it, guessing i'm, I'm guessing i'm still water yeah so and can so tell, can you tell me a little you know, about that and how it's different. Different. and how it's different. Um, well, so uh, just off the bat, obviously it's it's a lake, and so you can't see the bottom. That <laughs> that was a little bit scary for me in the beginning, just because um, I've never really swam in lakes like that before. Um, so that was definitely adjust an adjustment. Um, also, just the fact that it's so cold, and so the swimming in the wetsuit that was um, something totally foreign to me before and now. Um, but after like a week or so, you kind of just adjust and um, it's not quite as cold when you dive in anymore. And um, yeah, and also um, I have a, some other um, tack swimmer, um, Alex Tomlinson. He also um, was, is up at the lake that I'm at. Um, and so we've been swimming together and that's been really good to have um, like a training partner because it keeps you um, like, um, focused and um, helps push you a little harder because um, obviously training by yourself and training with someone else, um, there's a benefit to having someone else there to push you. Um, I also think just like swimming open water, you kind of, you know, it's it's just swimming for distance kind of. Um, but Bruce has given me some like workouts to do, uh, which have given like the water time like a purpose. So. Very cool. Uh, Lance? Um, yeah, pretty similar to that. Like, again, just doing like the tack dry land uh, like every other day. And I've been swimming open water. Um, well, like just getting out there when I can. So that's usually been every day. Um, I've usually been doing it alone, but like recently I've gotten together with some people to do it like like with other people so it's like easier to push harder like with other people training and stuff like that with you um so my school was already online before uh the pandemic so um like to get to the tag practices i would well i live an hour away so to get to, to the tag practices i would have to do my school online so other than that, like, that wasn't really a big change for me. Like, all of my stuff was still online, so I had already was adjusted to that. It was just getting used to, like, open water and the new schedule. And with the free time, I've been able to sleep in a lot more, not having to make that drive as often. Um, yeah, I think – yeah, I think that's it. So, for – do, do you do the open water sets that that Bruce has sent out as well and if so what you know how would you compare that to a pool set so what I usually do is I probably like if I did one of Bruce's workouts because I think he sent me originally there were like tethered workouts so I mean and it's not that big of a difference to do them in open water so I think I do like a two mile warm-up for just swimming and then there's like this open area where I swim at and I can do like, well, whatever the workout is, like a minute fly, 30 seconds rest, like a minute back, stuff like that. And I could do that three or four times. And it's also like stroke cycle wise. So it'll be like um, 30 stroke cycles are free or like 20 stroke cycles of fly, stuff like that. Nice. Uh, Claire? 
Um, so unlike Charlotte and Lance, my school wasn't online to start with. So the first couple of weeks I got used to doing Zoom calls and my, the way my school structured it was you have two blocks a day and each block is three hours. And so you can complete the week's work in that three hours. So it's been nice because it's only four days of school. So it's Monday, Tuesday, and then Thursday, Friday, with Wednesday being like you can call your teachers to like ask for help. Um, so that's been nice, just letting me, like, do my workout, my TAC workout in the morning. So, like, from 9.30 to 11.30, I go with my brother to work out, to do the dry lines that Aaron sent out. And then I do school. And then um, I go to my neighbor's pool, um, as some of you might have seen. Um, and there, I Bruce sends me tether workouts. Um, so it's just been working on power in my stroke and like underwaters. Um, so yeah, again, what do you think of kind of that contrast of you know a, a, a pool workout versus a tether workout? So I definitely saw a difference because tether workout, you're constantly working against resistance. So the other day, one of Bruce's workouts had me take off my tether and do like a fast breakout to the wall, which is not that far. Um, and it literally felt like I was flying. Um, <laughs> it was so fun, but definitely you just feel a really big difference because you're constantly working against the tether being tied to an anchor um, instead of just being able to pull yourself forward. Yeah, I think, so that gives us kind of a, that gives me an idea for an interesting question that we can kind of wrap on. I know we're running out of time, so if we could try to keep these answers relatively short, um, you know, maybe once once uh, pools reopen, you know, Bruce mentioned a soft opening for TAC, you know, once people are able to get back in the water and, and kind of train as, as we used to normally do, uh, what's one thing you still might incorporate um, that you've kind of discovered over this time period? You know, maybe it it might be tether swimming or open water swimming or, um, you know, or, or reading a little more. Or, you know, it can be in the pool, out of the pool. Um, but what's one thing you've enjoyed that you think you might still still keep doing once we get back to a more normal situation? Uh, well, probably one of the probably. things we actually started um, a number of years ago, we'd start kind of off in our aerobic build-up phase at the beginning of the season with run swims. Um, and obviously, yeah, look at Charlotte's eyes. Um, we may do those as, upon our return again this time, and the run swims are pretty easy. We kind of build them over four weeks where we go. Uh, a one mile run followed by a thousand meter swim, uh, usually long course. And then, you know, we, we keep an accurate time for everybody and we make a big deal about it. And it's a race and there's always somebody to chase. And then the next week we do that twice back to back. So a mile run, thousand meter swim, one mile run, thousand meter swim, obviously third week, three times back to back, uh, fourth time, Sometimes we'll do it in a relay fashion or go four times back to back. And that's very challenging. And now that they've been doing a lot of dry land, they are much better runners. Um, where many of them are not very good land animals, so to speak. So we, we may incorporate that. I'm not sure yet. Got to see what we're got to do and how much time we have and so forth. And that'll be interesting to do a comparison from year to year or from season to season. Well, the open water has been um, has been fun. We've got, you know, we, we've been pretty strong advocates for open water swimming within our program, um, but this has forced a number of people who may not have wrapped their arms around open water swimming as much uh, in the past. Um, we're getting some good enthusiasm. I've been going out with different groups and working on things with them technique wise and strategy wise um, and people seem to be getting excited about that so as we get into the fall 
Um, there's some open water races um, in North Carolina, and you know, hopefully we can grow our numbers um, in that aspect of the sport um, as as we move forward over the next couple of months. I've never really done it in the past and I kind of um, usually don't typically have a lot of time um, with other meets and stuff um, to do an open water race, but definitely if I had um, the time or an opportunity, I think that's something I would really like to do now. Um, and also I think the biggest takeaway for me going back to the pool would be just kind of an appreciation for the sport and for um, getting to do what we do every day and have the amazing facility that we have. I think that um, we all are going to be so much more um, just appreciative of um, everything that we have in every day at practice, the opportunity we have to train with all our teammates um, after being gone for so long. Yeah, so I think what I would keep doing like after this was like I might start continuing to do open water more because it's like really close to my house is where I swim so I guess on the days I have doubles and I can't like drive back and forth twice in one day then I can just probably just do an open water workout to make sure I'm like not losing like any practices and stuff like that um also yeah like I think I'm also going to appreciate where I swim a lot more just because it's calm because there's like not any wind or waves or anything like that in like a regular pool. So that's what I'll like about coming back. Um, two things that I would like to continue doing is running and tethered workouts before meets. Um, I didn't always enjoy running before, but like now that I've been doing it more, like I really just enjoyed it a lot better and being able to like run with my mom um, and just like talk with each other, it's been really fun. And then tethered workouts, I'd maybe like to do that like before races at meets because just the feeling it gives you when you take off the tether, like I think it would really help my practices like my racing and also maybe going up to meets like doing it in practice um well awesome i think i i've loved hearing all you guys' different insights um again I, I hopefully the swimming community will appreciate hearing what you guys are doing just like um you know just like everyone else has heard what you're doing uh Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to come talk to me and share what you've been doing. Um, Charlotte, I'm sorry for interrupting your nap time. Your nap time. Uh, but yeah, again, thank yeah. you so much for, you so for being here, y'all.